Have you noticed that some recipes specifically call for San Marzano canned tomatoes? While others call for tomatoes imported from Italy. And yet others call for San Marzano tomatoes imported from Italy. This always bugged me. And so far, I have completely disregarded the snooty advice. Instead, I relied on Cook's Illustrated to tell me which tomatoes taste best. But <laughs> curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to set up my own taste test. The organic Muir Glam tomatoes, Whole Foods 365 brand tomatoes, Palmy tomatoes, these are imported from Italy but are not San Marzano. San Marzano tomatoes, which turned out to be from the US, in spite of all the Italian writing on the can. And the official San Marzano tomatoes from Italy. You see the DOP on this can? These are some certified tomatoes. Until I started this project, I had no idea that most culinary experts suggest that you buy all your canned tomatoes whole and chop them yourself. The reason for this messy step is that most canned tomatoes have calcium chloride added to them for firmness. And it penetrates the tomato more if the tomato is cut, resulting in pieces that are too firm and don't break down as they cook. I actually bought some diced tomatoes for this test because that's what I usually buy. So I guess we'll see how they do. Most of these do indeed have calcium chloride added. The only ones that don't are Pommy and La Valle, which happen to be my two Italian imports. By the way, apologies to all these brands if I'm mispronouncing their names. Then there is the salt issue. Some of these tomatoes have salt and some don't. And it's not fair to compare seasoned food to bland food. Since no one eats cold canned tomatoes, I thought it would be much more interesting to find out how these tomatoes would taste warm and seasoned. So I chopped up the whole tomatoes, warmed them all up, and seasoned them to taste with salt, trying to keep the salt level about the same in all the samples. Then I tasted them, and the differences between the samples was striking. Let's start with the worst. 365 brand from Whole Foods. It had notes of iodine and the kind of metallic taste. Acidity was high, sugar was low, juice was watery, pieces were firm and wouldn't break down. This was the worst one of them all. In the fourth place, I would put more gland tomatoes. It was basically just like 365 brand without the metallic taste. Both 365 and Moore Glen tomatoes had occasional skins attached to pieces, which wasn't scoring any points for texture. Next two brands tied for the second and third place. Pami came already chopped. They were the only brand that contained only tomatoes. No salt, no citric acid, no calcium chloride. Out of the box, they were just blah. But that was just because they didn't have any salt. Once I seasoned them, they were lovely. Acidity and sweetness were well balanced. Juices were thick, pieces were soft. Unlike the tomatoes that I got whole, these didn't have any seeds, which got them brownie points for texture. The US-grown San Marzano tomatoes had many redeeming qualities too. They were a bit sweeter than pommy, with roughly the same acidity. Out of the can, the juices were a bit thin, but once they were chopped, they thickened. Straight out of the can, these tomatoes were very firm, but after chopping and warm up, they softened nicely. The only two downsides were the presence of the seeds and the necessity to chop them. And the winner of this tomato competition was the whole DOP San Marzano tomatoes imported from Italy. Incredibly sweet and fruity with moderate acidity and thick juices. The texture was like velvet. Simply amazing. They did have seeds, but the flavor was so good that I forgot about the seeds. So I'm a little bummed. I know I should have gone into this experiment with no expectation or biases, but I was kind of rooting for the underdog. I was hoping to show that the most expensive canned tomato is not necessarily the best one. But, well, I was wrong. You can't argue with the taste. These are amazing. 
So what does this mean going forward? Will I use DOP San Marziano tomatoes for everything? No, I don't think so. I think for most applications, Palmy tomatoes will do just fine. It's actually not a big price difference between Palmy and DOP San Marziano, but it's a big convenience difference. It is really nice to be able to open the box and just pour them in without chopping. And if the tomatoes are not the star of the show, I think Palmy work great. But if I'm making a tomato sauce, I think I will buy DOP San Marziano tomatoes and they are worth every penny and all the messy chopping. Did you ever have a similar experience that shattered your preconceptions about an ingredient? Let me know in the comments. In case you're wondering what canned tomatoes did I cook with all these years, I'll tell you, it's actually quite embarrassing. So when I started cooking, I read Cooks Illustrated a lot and they said that Muir Glen canned tomatoes, the diced ones, were the best, so that's what I bought. Over the years, I've noticed that they were getting more and more skins on them. Those pesky little skins are kind of annoying to take off. I don't like their texture. So I decided to try something else and I bought 365 brand from Whole Foods. They seemed affordable. I didn't see much of a difference in the way my dishes came out with Muir Glen versus 365 brand, though I never tasted those tomatoes by themselves, so I was not aware of that metallic aftertaste. Would you notice in a dish? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I guess I didn't notice much. And one day I ran out of canned tomatoes and I needed them for a dish. I didn't have time to drive to Whole Foods and I ran out to a tiny little supermarket here in Natick, Massachusetts called Bacon Street Farm. It's an adorable, super useful and super tiny store. In case you're ever in this neck of the woods, check it out. They had palmy tomatoes. I've never tried them before, but I decided to give it a go. And I loved how my dish came out, which got me thinking that maybe there were very serious differences between canned tomatoes and that I should find out what else is out there. That planted the seed for this whole video. And here we are. I guess now we know. Now I know. You know, taste is very subjective. This video is in no way meant to be scientific or to tell you what you should like. Remember Cooks Illustrated tried to tell me what I should like and apparently I didn't like that after all. Do your own tests if you want, but hopefully this gave you some idea of how to set up a taste test. This video was brought to you by viewers like you. If you liked it, click here to support my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications so that you don't miss a video. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.